there's language over here that we talked about, and we talked about this earlier, about the use of a thermal camera in lieu of the thermal imaging system. Mm -hmm. And uh, we're adding that language, I guess, in, uh, in one of the line items here. And again, it's just to clean up the, the usage of a, of a thermal imaging system. Right, and it's also just to, uh, uh, it's, it's in an effort as well to realize that there is another option for gotcha. thermal cameras, which is the thermal imaging system. If you look under the thermal imaging system paragraph two, we say uh, thermal imaging system software to generate temperature uh, profile plots daily. So the idea is, is, is if, if you're using the thermal imaging system, the engineer may request that he receives those files daily, daily mm -hmm. or upon completion of the project. project. Okay. So, and then in addition to that, under the thermal cameras, we stated when reported or when requested by the engineer, provide the thermal images generated using the thermal camera. So this is already the verbiage that was used in a former special provision. We just want to make sure that Included those in the new thermal spec. images are, are available. Right. For, and for so the contractor has to run one per sublot, right? That's correct. So the and engineer can then request those thermal imaging that's correct. images at the end of the day or at the end of the project. That's correct. Okay. That's correct. And again, it's just to address the, the use of the camera and address the use of the IR system. Uh, I do know this is that uh, some of the language that was removed in the construction aspect, and we talked about this quite a bit, is that mm -hmm. the, the use of a pneumatic tire roller to seal the surface, um, uh, you're going to remove that language. That's correct. Okay. That, that, that sentence has been struck out of the specification. Uh, the idea behind this is, is, is we're not saying you can't use a pneumatic roller, mm -hmm. we're just not requiring it. There you go. Uh, we talk about the, uh, the information regarding the overlay test and the Canterbro test. I know that, uh, that uh, you've struck a lot of the language out and then you've added some other. So walk through the Canterbro and the, uh, and the overlay test. Sure. So over the last 10 years or so, uh, in our specifications, we had this verbiage in there, informational Canterbro and overlay testing. Basically what it was is, is we wanted a sample of every mix that was being produced in the state to be sent to the materials and test division so we could run overlay and Canterbro. Uh, over the course of about 10 years, we ended up with about a thousand data points for the overlay. And so we have a good representation in terms of data. Uh, we have a good, we have enough data basically to be able to make some decisions regarding mm -hmm. that test. And so moving forward, districts will, not, will no longer be required to submit samples for informational Canterbro and overlay testing. Mm -hmm. um, instead, what we proposed, instead what we decided to do is to use uh, informational shear bond strength testing. The idea behind that is, is that we're in the process of developing, so we have a, a TEX test procedure, TEX 249, which is our shear strength mm -hmm. test. The idea behind that is, is, is it gives us an indication of the bond strength. We say how important bonding is to the performance of our pavement. Mm -hmm. This is a test that allows us to measure that bond strength, to ensure that you have adequate bond strength uh, so that you can expect good performance from your pavement. What we want to do moving forward is, is to have districts submit samples two cores from every project. These cores need to be full depth cores and we also need to mark the direction of traffic. But we'd like two samples from every project because we want to start building a database mm -hmm. with utilizing this test. So if we can get something similar like we did for the Canterbro and overlay testing in terms of shear, it'll allow us to make them some decisions moving forward in terms of uh, specifying perhaps a minimum bond strength right. needed for the project. And again, this is going over again that the reason that we're paying for TAC and the reason that it's so important that we don't dilute it and it's so important that we get it out uniformly is for this to happen, this, this, this to bonding bond to happen. That's and correct. with this information, I think that you're going to find out that when we don't have that happening, just like our, mm -hmm. our presentation that we do, mm -hmm. you're going to lose that life of the payment. So I, again, I think it's great that you guys included that in y'all's in y'all's specification. Uh, you also added verbiage regards to the asphalt sampling being witnessed. That's correct. So a lot of changes with our asphalt binder sampling program. Mm -hmm. uh, so we added verbiage in there witnessed by the engineer. What that means is, is that when we go to take an asphalt sample, we need a TxDOT or TxDOT representative person there to witness the collection of that sample. 
So TxDOT or a TxDOT representative will not be taking the sample, they will be witnessing the collection of that sample. And then after the sample is taken, then TxDOT has ownership of it and takes collection. That's correct. They will, they will then take custody of the sample right. uh, and submit it to either A, submit it to Materials and Test Division for testing, or B, store it as we'll discuss in a later video. Right. So there's a whole nother section with your, your sampling of the, uh, of the asphalt binders, both not only with the asphalt, but with the seal coat also. So uh, again, correct. we're going to discuss that a little bit later on That's uh, and spend some extra time on that. That's but uh, it is in our specification, our new specification, it is in there that it will be witnessed by the engineer re right. engineer's representative. That's right. And we also said the contractor will notify the engineer when the sampling will occur, so that, that way Everybody's on the same page. Everybody knows that we're about to pull this sample. Okay. In addition to that, we also added some verbiage and upstream from the introduction of any additives. The idea behind that verbiage is, is that it's in regards to the sampling port. Moving forward, TxDOT wants that sampling port to be in, within the main line of the asphalt in between your tanks and the drum. Mm -hmm. The idea is, is basically we want to know what's going into that mix. Mm -hmm. and so I know, Chuck, you and I have had discussions about that in the past. Uh, moving forward, we need to work with industry to help us uh, Get put, that, in, put in those sampling get those ports and so collect the sample where they need to be collected. And forward. you got to give industry a little bit of time to react Absolutely. to that. Uh, there's no doubt that uh, as, as industry, we're going to have to identify that, that area and then, and mm -hmm. then get that port sampling mm -hmm. uh, section put in. Uh, we've talked about it many, many times. Mm -hmm. uh, industry's aware of it. And uh, we just need to, to, to get that hurdle when we, when we get there. So just give us a little time on it and I think we'll, we'll get your, your sampling ports in there. Yep, and we also included that uh, it's very important that we label the sample with all information. More information, the better. So we included basically lot sublot numbers, the producer, the producer, not only the producer, but also the producer facility location. So uh, asphalt A from this location, if you will. Um, the grade, the district, the date sampled, and project information, including highway and CSJ. Very important that we get that information on those samples. And then we also stated that the engineer will retain these samples for one year. Okay. And so we're getting into the new binder sampling program that we'll discuss in, a, in, a, in another video. But, but the idea behind it is, is we'd want to, we want to sample every day, so every lot, mm -hmm. we want to pull a sample. Uh, TxDOT needs to witness those samples, TxDOT needs to label those samples correctly, and then we need to store those samples for a year. And I know that this question has come up. We do want these samples uh, stored in a climate-controlled environment. So in other words, we don't want to have them out exposed to the sun. We don't mm -hmm. want to have them in you know, an, an unconditioned room, if you will. So the question is, is TxDOT taking these samples? Are they taking the possession of the sample? TxDOT or does take, the contractor have the sample? TxDOT will take possession, possession of the okay. samples. After so witnessing After collection. witnessing, then it becomes TxDOT's property. That's correct. Okay. That's correct. And that's, and, that's, and that's good. That's good to clarify that the contractor's not going to, to, to have the sample. They're going to submit it to TxDOT. That's right. The contractor so, is more than willing to uh, take get a split sam sample, sample if they want absolutely. to at that time, but TxDOT needs to have a sample ownership per day it. and mm -hmm. ownership of that sample. And some of the other wording I noticed through here again, we're referencing materials and test division. That's going to be in, and that's going to be uh, uh, in the new specification throughout. Uh, so that's just language clarification. Mm -hmm. There's probably six or seven times that you reference materials and test division. So uh, I believe we hit that earlier on in the language aspect. Yeah, but I'll just mention something quickly about table 17. So basically we added the shear bond test to that table. Uh, it's for informational only, right? Mm -hmm. we'll make that clear that there's no specification requirement regarding the results of that test. We're just looking to build a database moving forward. If you also look at that table, we also struck out the Canabrone and Overlay test, which means that districts no longer need to submit samples to MTD for Canabrone and Overlay testing. Right. Uh, what about the placement test sampling? We revised the wording on that where it says now that the engineer will witness the trimming of the cores, and then you, for clarification, we're looking at uh, new test procedures, um, 251 instead of 207. Yes, and so a couple of things there. So what we've done uh, with the new certification program at Texapa is 
is uh, we've included a new test procedure. Mm -hmm. That test procedure is now TEX-251. Basically, it's a new test procedure that describes how to not only trim a core, but also how to obtain the core through the coring process. There's pay factors associated with these cores, right? right? It's important that we standardize that process. And so instead of including the trimming of the cores under TEX-207, you're going to separate them. Remove that All right. and now have put it into TEX-251 and we're going to hit a standalone test procedure. And we're going to hit that later on because again, like you said, it affects pay factors. That's so right. we're going to do another That's discussion right. about that That's right. at, a, at a later time. That's right. Uh, that the contractor and TechStot is aware of that that mm -hmm. change, mm -hmm. and I think it's imperative that that we get that correct again because it does affect pay factors. Right. And then we also say witnessing the trimming of the cores for clarification. That's correct. We want to make sure that the engineer is there or engineer rep representative is there to witness the trimming of the cores.